it's great to have you both on the programme tonight. Um, Sally, the numbers are still very small, but I suppose the trend is going up, which is what's concerning you. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. I think this report's really interesting because in alcohol research for some time, people have been saying, you know, what there is a ticking time bomb with young women who've been drinking, started drinking maybe a couple of decades ago for all sorts of cultural reasons, but that they've been drinking. Some of them haven't kind of grown out of those drinking habits because most people do grow out of drinking habits. You know, you get through your 20s and you drink a bit less towards your, the end of your 20s into 30s. Um, and this report it really is the first indication that, yeah, that, that there might be something going on. It's not definitive by any stretch of the imagination, but these women were born in the 70s. So they were drinking in the 90s and they're now in their mid 30s to mid 40s. And it's women from a number of different cities. It's not just one, is it? Which, yeah. which gives the... Um, the survey some weight. So, so Anne, what do you think is going on here? Because I think we're probably all from this bracket, aren't we? What do you think's changed compared to, say, how our mothers or grandmothers? Well, I think thinking? a number of things have changed culturally around alcohol and women. For a start, women didn't tend, they went out and consumed alcohol. It tended to be more with food. It was men who went to the pub, wasn't it, and came back after a few too many pints. So women would maybe drink it at home, but there wasn't that sort of culture. Some people might call it the ladette culture, but you, know, you could just call it women going out, being confident enough to go out in groups with their female friends and drink. The other thing that changed a lot is we used to always say in Northern Europe, we lived in, in the beer belt and that Southern Europe was more about wine. Wine's a more attractive drink to women. So were sweet cocktails and anything that's sweetened. So the markets changed and wine sort of crept north. You didn't have to go on your holidays to France or Italy to consume a, you know, quite a lot of Chardonnay. Anymore. We seem to be able to find it. Uh, and at the same time, you know, you had the, the incursion of all these quite sweet drinks into the markets, yeah. the Bacardi breezes and things, which appealed more to young women's taste. And it's not just t the binge drinking on the weekend, is it? It's women like me who go home in the evening after yeah. a hard day at work and start having a few glasses of wine in the evening. And that's it doesn't seem dangerous, does it? But it, but it is after yeah, a long period and, of time. You know, I, Anna and I were just chatting before this, and I've only been in alcohol research for um, about five years. And I thought the government guidelines were a nonsense before I started researching. I thought, you know, nanny state, how can it be? But they are real. And what's interesting about this report, I think, is that ordinarily when we report on young women, we're reporting on young women falling over themselves in Hull Town Centre, uh, you know, way too much mm. to drink. And it's all very sens sensationalistic. Well, this report is different because this is looking at the longer term effects of alcohol. For these women to get where they are right now, they have been drinking at an unsafe level. That is really what I'm hearing. I go around the world a lot and look at different healthcare systems and what they see is their big public health problems. And the one that we have is that we tend to think of problem drinking as falling over in a gutter. And if you're not doing that, you're all right. But of course, if you rack up the units over many years, what you'll find is you're now seeing, I think your report shows it, that the kind of cirrhosis and alcohol related diseases are kicking in younger and younger, and that women are just creeping up into that bracket that was once occupied by the older hard drinking man. Now we've been out and about today, lovely hot sunny day, it's a Friday afternoon, people are already hitting the pubs, clocking off work early, and we've been talking to some women who've been tucking into their glass of wine this afternoon. Let's listen to what they had to say. It's a nice day. I'm having a cider, which is nice and refreshing. I've got a bottle of water in my bag, and I'm not I'm not up for going out and living it large. I'm going to have a nice time. I've worked really hard, and I'll enjoy my four drinks that I have this evening. Tonight, I'm going to go home, and I'm going to have a couple of glasses of champagne and celebrate because we've just exchanged on a house. And so, no, I don't have any worries about my health concerns because it's not every day that the sun is shining and I get to exchange on a house. They said they, they seem to know what they're talking about, right? They kind of, and they seem to know four glasses, two glasses, whatnot. But I suppose it's very embedded in our culture now, isn't it? Very hard to stop drinking, I would suppose. Don't you think, Sally? I think it probably is. You know, there aren't, uh, and there aren't a lot of places you can go for a drink. You know, you, can't, you can go to a coffee bar, but then you're going to be wired on caffeine till God knows what time in the morning. You know, it, it is part of our culture. And I mean, don't get me wrong, although we're talking about the harms of alcohol, Alcohol is a wonderful thing. You know, it breaks down social barriers. It creates great relationships. You know, people lose their inhibitions. And so they, nice. it tastes, <laughs> tastes good, makes you feel good. You know, I mean, who wouldn't want to alter their mood? It's interesting, though, that this result, this survey has come out, Anne, as we've also had the government this week deciding to abolish its um, plans for pricing, minimum pricing for alcohol. Was that a 
bad mood, do you think, for the government? I think they should be doing more. Yeah, I mean, I think they should be sending the strongest. Thing. I'm sorry, I'm going to come on a little bit like the killjoy here. And like those ladies, I've often you know, sat at the pavement cafe and absolutely savoured a huge glass of Chardonnay at the end of the hard week. But the problem is that we are underestimating what we're drinking. You saw the very sensible sounding lady saying we'll have four glasses tonight. We you know think what? we're having four, but That's by, you know, by seven o'clock lot. tonight. <laughs> and also that the glass size is, is growing and the publicans and restaurants have worked out that we, 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 we want to be tricked. We want to think, oh, I had a small glass. Actually, what we had was we had double the units that we thought we were getting. So I would have been in favour of sending a stronger signal. And I think the government was put off uh, largely by the drinks industry. I think it's a, an argument that will recur. I don't think it's over forever. Sally, do you I think, think there's that... lots of parallels with tobacco? Um, you know, mm. there's resistance. And I think there's resistance because we all have a relationship with alcohol. Uh, you know, so and we don't live in a nanny state. I think that's right. As someone who is fairly libertarian, philosophically, I completely get where the government is coming from. But I know the evidence, and there are now more than 100 studies. And what happens is you put up the price, and we can even quantify it, put up the price by 10 pence per unit, harms drop by 5%. And you get away from that thing, which I think is really worrying, is when you go to a bar, I went to a bar, we know, I was with a, a younger friend, and he was going to have a drink, and, and she, he wanted to double something, and the barman goes, triples are cheaper. And you think, well, hang on, basically, wow. what you're doing there is that person is going to consume, uh, consume a third more even on one drink. I mean, one of those, and I don't think, you know, I would not be fit for consumption on Channel <laughs> so 5 just, News. Just, just briefly to wrap up, um, do you think our daughters or granddaughters will have the same issue with alcohol that, that say we do? I think our children are starting to drink a bit later, and that's a really good sign because of all sorts of developmental reasons to do with the brain. And what I do you think, think? Yeah, I think it will maybe move a little bit towards the, the way that we think about smoking. I think we will have to ex acknowledge the harms that it causes, along with the great pleasures and uh, the, the arguments for moderate drinking. I think we now can't get away from the evidence maybe for a few years we hope we could Anne and Sally thank you very much hope you enjoy a glass of wine tonight